Good morning. How's everybody feeling today? You guys doing good? I, I'm looking for my, my wonderful, beautiful wife. Is she in the room this morning, Pastor Lori? All right, somebody, can somebody go grab her for me, wherever she's at? Rob, can you go get her? Thanks. That's an old thing. Somebody call the police. Everybody's like, you doing it? Am I doing it? Man, how you guys feeling today? You guys doing good? Thank you, thank you, thank you for braving the weather. Uh, I know that church, church people can be fickle people. We look outside, we're like, oh, it doesn't look great. I think I'm going to stay in today. Jesus will understand. Thank you for braving the, the rain. How I know that you say that is because I say that too. Somebody else will preach. I'll be fine. I'm going to order me some Panera soup, and I'm going to stay in bed today. Uh, but thank you guys for coming out. I want to give first uh, a huge shout-out to uh, Pastor Scott last week uh, for continuing our series. He talked to us about surrender. Can we just give it up for Pastor Scott uh, today? Uh, did a fantastic, fantastic job. Uh, very, very appreciative of, uh, of him and the team and everybody for holding it down. We were at a leadership conference uh, this past week uh, down in Southwest Florida, down in Fort Myers. And uh, if you were here for uh, Vision Sunday, we had talked back in the summer uh, about being connected to Next Level Relational Network. And uh, that's where we were. We were at a church called Next Level Church uh, with pastors Matt and Sarah Keller. And uh, it was a, it was an awesome conference. It was amazing. A lot of the team were down there, directors and team members. And so uh, we had a, a great time and we were super charged, uh, charged up and uh, still super charged up in the room. So if you, if you sense a little extra energy uh, from the team, uh, just soak it up, man. Just, just just put some hands on and just, you know, download yourself, get some extra energy today uh, for, uh, for what God is doing for us. Uh, lastly, I just want to thank, if there's anybody here for the first time, if you're a guest with us this morning, even a returning guest, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming back. Uh, we know that church, uh, church shopping can be a very dangerous uh, scary thing. When you go into some places, you're locked in until they let you go. And uh, we know it's a, it's a brave, uh, brave thing to come and to be a part. And so we thank you for doing that, especially if you roll in solo. Uh, church uh, shopping all by yourself can be such a scary thing. And so thank you for trusting us with, with your time. Thank you for trusting us this morning. And uh, we believe, uh, we know that God is going to touch your heart today. And so uh, we want to thank you uh, for trusting us with your heart today and, uh, and being with us today this morning. Uh, I, I do want to say uh, that tomorrow is my wife's birthday. And so I wanted to give a second to honor her. Um, there, there is a scripture in, in Timothy uh, that says that the elders of the church, the leaders of the church uh, are worthy of double honor. And so uh, we want to honor her this morning. This is her 39th and holding birthday. I don't know, plus how many, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, we want to, uh, we just want to honor you. We love you, babe. And can we just sing happy birthday? Can we just do it like just real deal? You know what I mean? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor Lori. Happy birthday to you. Love you, babe. And many more. I always got to throw that in there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. We love you, babe. Happy birthday uh, tomorrow. We are in a series called Freedom, and uh, we are in the second part of a three-part series called Freedom. The first part was about being between two trees, and we were back in the Garden of Eden and looking at what happened uh, with the very first family and realizing that that happens with our families too. The very first uh, man and woman, it happens with every man and woman. Uh, that, that, that What happened in the garden continues to happen in our own life. And so the first part was learning and looking uh, at their lives and finding out what that means for us living between those two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, evil. Well, a couple weeks ago, we kicked off the second part, and this uh, part is all about the heart. On the journey of freedom, uh, th th there is a, a very big stop along that way, and it will continue to, uh, to pay attention to it. It's, it's about our heart. What's going on beneath, uh, beneath this chest here, deep down in our soul? Uh, we, we kicked it off learning that the heart is the filter of life. That in the heart, everything is going through it. Uh, every experience, every uh, high, every low, every hurt, every wound, every joy is going through the heart as a filter for our life. And so we've been talking about that. And today we're going to continue with that, uh, that concept about being in the heart. But I want to ask you to turn with me to Acts chapter 28. 
Acts chapter 28 is where I want you to go. If you can follow along with us on the YouVersion, uh, the Bible app, or if you brought a Bible with you, there's some around, I believe, somewhere, or you can follow along uh, on the screen with us today. Acts chapter 28. Um, I want to show us a, uh, this very cool moment with the Apostle Paul and his friends, Luke and Silas, uh, on this island. And uh, I, I believe there's something to be learned, something to be uh, gleaned from this interaction that Paul had on this island with his friends. Acts chapter 28, uh, starting at the first verse, uh, once safely on shore. Now, quick context, they were on a ship, they were traveling, the ship was uh, shipwrecked, crashed, and they had to like float on debris to get to where they were going. So they get to this island, this island called Malta. So we found out the island was called Malta. Verse two, the islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was rainy and it was cold. We all know what that feels like. Amen. Verse three, Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat, fastened itself on a hand. I mean, just like a flash of lightning, pow! This snake is hanging on, hanging on to his hand. Verse four, when the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. That escalated quickly, didn't it? <laughs> it's just a snake bite, dude. I didn't, you know. He says, for though they, they escaped from the sea, the goddess justice has not allowed him to live. Verse 5, but Paul shook off the snake, like a boss, into the fire, suffered no ill effects. Verse 6, so the people expected him to swell up and suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Not just a snake bite. This is one or the two. You're a murderer or you're a lowercase g god. No, no room for, for in between. Uh, today, as we're talking about uh, all about the heart, uh, the topic for today is about forgiveness. And this is a heavy one. Uh, this is a tough one for, for many of us, uh, actually for all of us, because we will all be wounded at some point. We will all have a bite that we have to deal with. And uh, the only remedy for us is through the, the pathway of forgiveness. And so uh, let us pray this morning as we dive in. God, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done to us, it's spoken in our hearts, what you've already done in the heart of every individual. God, I pray that you would uh, speak to us even more today. Lead us in life. Lead us in freedom, God, that we would continue to walk out this life the way that you designed it, free and whole and in life like you created it to be. God, I pray that you would do something in our hearts today. Speak to us. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Has anybody ever rented a car in the room? Anybody ever rented a car? Yeah. You know, if you've rented a car, that is the worst experience on the face of the planet, right? So here's the deal. You, you, you book a car for a certain price, and you do your diligence, and you find the best possible deal online. But when you actually walk into the building it doesn't matter what you did prior to that moment. Now there's a gauntlet in front of you that you have to face as, as you, you walk this rental car thing out. And if you haven't, uh, if you haven't rented a car before, let me explain how this goes. You go, you find a price, you go in, you have a reservation on your phone. Well, when you get to the counter, they're like, oh, so great to see you. Thanks so much for running with us. This is fantastic. Would you like a bottle of water? Can, can I massage your feet? Is everything okay? I'm fine. I just want my car. Oh, awesome. We're going to get it for you. It's going to be great. Uh, but first, I need to know about your coverage. Would you like to take the additional coverage? Not every insurance company allows the coverage. It's not going to cover the rental car. We can cover you for an extra $19.97 per day. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do with the car. You can crash it. You can throw it off a hill. It doesn't matter. We will cover you for a simple uh, $19.97 uh, per day. You just initial at this, right? You're like, no, 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 I'm good. I've got the coverage that I need. Believe me, my own insurance company is bleeding me dry here. I, I don't need your coverage. I've been paying for it uh, for, for decades. I'm fine. I don't need the extra. Oh, oh, that sounds great. Everything okay? You need something? Can I massage your shoulders? Is there anything that I can? Is there anything that I can do? No, I'm good. All right, we're right along, moving right along. Second step here, I need to know if you want to prepay for the gas, Anybody, the prepay gas situation. Hey, if you, if you come back and the car is half full, uh, you can pay for that gas right now at this cheap rate of $2.27. Uh, or if you come back and it's half full and we have to fill it up, then it actually jumps up to 4 
$1,000.75. Would you like to prepay right now? What they don't tell you is that you're actually prepaying for a full tank of gas, not just what you don't use. It's, it, it's just, so no, don't, we don't want the gas. I don't want the gas. Give me, get away with the gas, okay? I've got my own gas. I'll fill it up myself. Oh, hey, it's cool. Is there anything else I can do for you? Is it fine? Are your kids okay? Can I read them a bedtime story? Is there anything I can do? No, I'm all right. I just want my car. Oh, we're just one more step away. Um, will there be any other additional drivers uh, on the ride this week? Well, yes, actually, uh, we signed up for a business account, which said there was going to be a free additional driver. So we thought that this was all, no, actually, it's not that way. I'm sorry. Everything you did online was absolutely meaningless. It doesn't matter what you did. You actually have to pay 10 extra dollars a day. Well, I, I was coming in with the bags by the time that I, I got to my wonderful wife, having this part of the conversation with the lovely lady at the car dealership. We love you. Jesus loves you. But something wasn't right that day with your heart. And I walk in, and there was this tense moment that was happening uh, between my wife and this wonderful lady uh, behind the counter who refused to give us the free driver discount that we signed up for months in advance. She, and she's like, ma'am, you can come around the table and look at yourself. It's not, tell, it's not allowing me to do it. Cue eye roll from the girl, snarky uh, tone in her voice, and also uh, flames coming out of my wife's eyes at this moment. <laughs> And we're like, look, we ran it with you guys before. We went through this whole thing. Same deal. We dropped the manager's name given to us by the friends that are friends with the manager. And everything turned around. Everything was fine. So we dropped his name again. She says, I'll go check with him. She goes back and she says, oh, yeah, he was just out here. He said he didn't recognize you. Sorry. So at that point, I flipped the table over. <laughs> I kicked the dog. I didn't, kick, I didn't kick a dog. I would never do anything like that. That's against you know, my heart, I would never do anything to a, a pet. Anyway, we were mad. We were, we were mad. And anyway, so we walked out and we didn't have the uh, ad additional driver. See, here's the thing. When you're traveling, you get off the plane, you get disheveled a after security, you know what I mean? You got to you know, put yourself back together, your, your belt, and you get on the plane, you travel, you land, you get your bags, you just want to get your car and get to the hotel room, but you can't. Because these people are holding your soul, your eternity in the palm of their hand, and they're crushing it second by second. It is terrible. It's a terrible experience. So we just wanted to get our car and get out of there. But little did we know that we were going to be bit, pow, with some experience that we didn't expect. So we finally do get our car. In the next 30 minutes, all we're doing is talking about the bad rental experience we just went through. We just wanted to go through life, get our car, and get on mode. Have you ever been going through life and you just get bit by something. It may not be renting a car, maybe at work. Some coworker in the other cubicle gives you a funny look, the stink eye, and you're like, what? Who are you? Who are you right now? Did you really just do that? You know? You're scrolling through Facebook and you're just looking for, you know, all the cute pictures and, and stuff with cats, and then you come across somebody's post and you know they're talking about you. You know what I mean? Ever scrolled on one of those? Is this guy for real right now? Is he, is he really saying this stuff? I know, I know you ain't coming at me like that. We're just going through life and you just get bit, you know? Your neighbor does something. Maybe one of your children, maybe one of your grandchildren comes and says something or doesn't come and doesn't do something and you just get, you get bit. Best case scenario when we get bit, when we get hurt in a situation of life is to do what Paul did and just shake it off. But the probability is that you didn't because we don't like to. That hurt that hits us, ooh, it makes us feel alive. It gets our adrenaline pumping, and we like to leave the snake hanging on our hand. We like to leave the, the, the wound so that everybody can see it because it just, mm, it just gets us going a little bit. Maybe you're not a sadistic person like me, but when I get hurt, oh, it rouses me up. Oh, it just makes me feel come alive. It makes me alive, you know what I mean? I can't wait to tell somebody what they did to me. It just makes life interesting, you know? The probability is that you didn't shake it off. You actually left it right where it was because it made you feel alive. Now, this is the thing. When it comes to this, this opportunity of being bit, being hurt, see, Paul, he had this snake hanging on his hand, and he had a couple options. He could have said, um, excuse me, snake, sir. Uh, this, is not, this is not cool. I demand an apology. I, I'm not going to let you go until you apologize for what you've done. How long do you think Paul would have stood there? Till he died, because the snake ain't apologizing, right? He could have grabbed the snake and he could have bit him back. Oh, yeah? You want to bite me? I'll bite you. He could have turned to everybody and says, can you believe this guy? 
Look at this. Can you believe what he, I was just making a fire. I was just, you know, I mean, can, look at this guy. Can he just jump down and got me? Look, look, look. This guy is from the pits of hell. He's a demon. Look at me. That's, look at this guy. He's just hanging. He could have just showed everybody how bad the wound does, or, or, or he could have just justified his own, his own actions. I wasn't doing anything. I was, I was completely free. I was innocent in this. I didn't do anything. He, he bit me. I was just minding my own business. He could have done all of those things, but guess what? It wouldn't have dealt with the poison that was in his system, right? When you and I get bit, we have a couple options. We can demand an apology. We can bite back. We can tell everybody how bad the person is, like I just did about the car rental place. I, God, forgive me. Sorry about that. <laughs> or we could tell everybody how good we are, right? I wasn't doing anything. I was minding my business. My intentions weren't to do that. But none of those things deal with the poison that is in our system called offense, hurt, wound, getting bit. See, here's the thing. When it comes to hurt, we must immediately stop the poison from going through our system. And the only way to do that is called forgiveness. When it comes to hurt, we must stop the poison in its tracks. We have to constrict the wound. We have to suck the poison out. And the only way to do that in the human heart is this thing called forgiveness, this healing moment called forgiveness. See, unfortunately, the church, big capital C church, is not known for being very forgiving. And it's a crazy thing, right? Because we should be the most forgiving. We should be the most gracious. We should be the most loving. I mean, we have a direct connect to love itself, right? Scripture tells us that God is love, right? We have a direct connect to God himself. We should be the most loving, the most gracious, the most forgiving. But unfortunately, the church is not really known for its grace and its love and its forgiveness. Case in point, Kanye. Let's talk Kanye West for a second. So Kanye... All right, so Kanye is he's a wild man. I would be the first to admit, all right? He actually called himself God not too long ago. He's just, Kanye's Kanye, right? God loves you like Kanye loves some Kanye, right? I saw that shirt last week. Now, here's, here's the fact. Kanye has been connected with the church in, uh, in Miami, uh, Pastor Rich Wilkerson Jr., Vu Church, and God has been doing something in Kanye and Kim's life for the past couple years. And um, just on Friday, he released a new album called Jesus is King. And the entire album is nothing but a testimony to how good God is. No curse words, no derogatory statements, nothing about, you know, making money, living on the streets, nothing derogatory about women, not, none of that, none of that stuff. It's all about Jesus. And what did the church do? Hey, hang on. Let, let's, let's see if Kanye is really saved. Let's see how this plays out. Let's see if there's really any fruit. Let's see if this is real. Now, let, let's talk about this for a second. Do we do that with any other person that comes to find Jesus? So let's say we're in this environment on a service on Sunday. Like at the end of this service, we're all going to pray together. We're going to give an opportunity for somebody to know Jesus for the very first time. Let's say somebody's hand goes up in the darkness just between them and Jesus, and we say, man, that's cool and all, but let's see how it plays out. Let's see if, it's, if, if it sticks. Let's see if you're really saved. I'll come back and talk to you next week. Would we really do that in this environment? I hope not. I hope not. So then why when Kanye comes out and says, hey guys, Jesus has radically saved me and I don't know what to do except for to talk about him every single place that I go, why would we step back and say, let's see, let's see. That's what I'm talking. The church, for some reason, is not known for the most forgiving, most gracious, most loving people in the world. Why, why would we respond to like that? Here's the thing, it's not new to Kanye, though. The Apostle Paul, if you go read in the middle of Acts, he shows up. Remember, he was killing Christians, murdering Christians. And he shows up and he says, hey, guys, I'm one of you guys now. Let's party. <laughs> Crickets. They actually tried to kill him. They were like, yeah, yeah, we think you're lying. We think that you're actually, this is a ploy to get us to come out of hiding so you can murder us like you did Stephen. So guess what? We're going to kill you first. This ain't unique to Kanye. Paul had to go through the same thing. Actually, he says in the middle of Galatians, it was years he spent out in the wilderness. He's like, man, it ain't want nothing to do with me. So I just walked out into the desert 
This is some times with me and Jesus. Everything was cool. It's not new to Kanye. It happens to people all over the place. See, I, here's what, I'm, what, what I'm, I'm wrestling with right now. Why would we not forgive a guy's past that had nothing to do with us? I get not forgiving somebody that hurt you directly, but why would we not offer grace to a guy that's never crossed paths with us? Why would we hold his past against him and not forgive him as easily as God forgave us? Why would we not do that? And if I could be honest with you, I think this is what revival looks like. Kanye West, Justin Bieber, Chris Pratt, some of the biggest stars, most influential people in our country right now have been radically saved. The church, we should be welcoming them with open arms, not on the front line of being critics. I think this is what revival looks like. Can I be honest with you? I think this is what revival looks like. See, when I was growing up, revival was in, in the four walls of the church. And I'm not, you know, diminishing what happened there. It was amazing, man. People were healed. Uh, stuff happened in the four walls. It was crazy. You know, miracles happened. Hearts were changed. Lives were revolutionized in the presence of Jesus. It was powerful. But I think revival in the 21st century looks a little bit like this. God grabbing the hearts of the one, some of the most influential people and the gospel being broadcast on Satan's own tools used against him. I think this is what revival looks like. This is a wild revival here. I'm getting ahead of myself. What if we, what if the church was known for our forgiveness and our grace and our love? What if that was our calling card? What if when somebody did something against us, we were the quickest to forgive? Hey, oh man, that hurt. But I know you're, you're going through something. And I just want to tell you, man, I'm, I'm sorry for my part. I forgive you for yours. What if the church was the quickest to forgive rather than the slowest? What if when forgiveness happened, the world said, hey, you must be one of those Jesus people because you guys always do that. Everyone that I bumped into, you guys actually give me the most grace out of anybody. You guys give me the most love, the most forgiveness. What if when love, grace, and forgiveness showed up, somebody was looking for a Christian? What would happen if that was the case? Because right now, that ain't the case. When something gets judgmental, when, when, when somebody's past comes up, they're looking for a Christian. Where's one of those church people? Because they love to dig up dirt. They love to hold my past against me. What if we were known by our grace, by our love, and by our forgiveness? How amazing would that be, right? For that to happen as a church, as a capital C house church, we actually need to practice it individually. You and I need to get good at forgiveness. For that to be what we are known for as a group, we have to get good at it as a person. So how do we do this? When we get bit, what are some ways to respond to our hurt? What are some ways to respond when we get bit? There are two ways to respond when hurt shows up. When we get bit by something, someone, someplace, when somebody says a thing, somebody does a thing, doesn't do a thing, doesn't say a thing. How should we respond? There are two ways to respond when we get bit. Number one is to overlook minor offenses. To overlook minor offenses. The first way we can respond is just to overlook it. Now, I'm not talking about major gross sin because we all have seen in, in history the, the big church has had a history of overlooking things that shouldn't have been overlooked, right? Things that should have been dealt with right away, should have been handled spot on, unseen, should have, should, have, should have handled it right then and there, but instead they just brushed it under the rug for, you know, they just kind of let it be where it was. I'm not talking about that stuff. But there are minor offenses that you and I should be covering with love. Check out Peter wrote it. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. He says, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Wouldn't it be awesome if we loved each other with such depth that when hurt came, when we got bit, pow, when offense showed up in our heart, we were the quickest to say, you know what, man? Uh, just, it hurt. But I just want to tell you, I love you. And man, I'm sorry for my part. I'll forgive you for yours. What if we were quick to love and forgive? What if we were quick to cover a multitude of sins with a deep love? Now, not every sin should be overlooked. I'll give you a couple quick ones that should not be overlooked. When the behavior is part of a destructive pattern, 
we need to deal with it. Not just brush it under the rug. It needs to be dealt with. When the conflict or behavior is hurting another person, it needs to be dealt with, not overlooked. When the, 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 the behavior is hurting the offender, when somebody's hurting themselves, it needs to be dealt with, not overlooked. And then lastly, if it's significantly dishonoring God or dishonoring the body of Christ, it should be dealt with. There are big things that should be dealt with. But there are minor offenses that happen to each and every one of us that we should be in the habit of, hey, man, I'm going to forgive quick. I'm going to be difficult to offend. I'm not going to let that poison set into my system. I'm going to shake it off. I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm not going to let this offense take hold in my heart. I'm not going to let the poison seep through my system. First way you and I to respond when we get bit is to overlook minor offenses. But the second way, when, when hurt comes, when we are bit, when, when offense hits our heart, the second way we should respond is to have courageous conversations. Not to overlook them, not to, not to, to give them to God and forgive quickly, but we need to get good at having courageous conversations. Check out what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every other form of malice. Slander is in the same sentence as malice, as malicious behavior, hurt behavior. Slander is talking about somebody when they're not present, right? Paul's like, get rid of that garbage. Toss it. Get out of here. Verse 32, to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ, in Christ God forgave you. So we need to have this stance, hey, I'm going to forgive somebody. I'm going to forgive them just the same way that God forgave me. I, I need to have that posture of heart. Well, how do we have courageous conversations? Let me give you two quick steps on how to have courageous conversations. Number one, before speaking to them, immediately go to God. Before going to the person, you need to talk it over with Jesus first, all right? Before having a courageous conversation with a person, we need to have a conversation with God. Because what happens when I go to talk to somebody who hurt me before I talk to God about it, as I put all the blame on them. You know what you did to me? Can I, can I tell you what, 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 what you said, what, how you made me feel? See, something happens when I go to God and I say, you know, God, you know what they did to me? God's like, ah, 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 ah. hey, pump your brakes, Chris. You know what you did to them too? Yeah, yeah, that's not what I'm here to talk about, Jesus. I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about them. Something happens when we go to God first. We give him our, our cares, our burdens, before we go to talk to somebody. Psalm 55 says this way, cast your cares, your burdens on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Jesus even said it in the New Testament. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened or heavy laden, the King James would say, and I will give you rest. We need to take our cares and our burdens first to Christ, first to Christ. Step two to have a courageous conversation is this. We need to get in the habit of talking to one another, not about one another. If there's any point that you hear today, that one. Get in the habit of talking to one another, not about one another. Not when you guys are in a group setting and the person leaves to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, go yeah, I'll, watch, I'll watch your stuff. Man, you hear what he's talking about? <laughs> this guy is something else, man. It's like, just he can't let it go, can he? He just keeps, man, just, man, just, man, just, man. oh, hey, how, how'd it go? Everything come out all right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Why do we do that stuff, Right? We're actually in the habit of talking about one another rather than talking to one another. We're, we're real good about that stuff. When somebody leaves, somebody's not around, maybe bringing it up in the DMs, you know, we like to talk about somebody before actually talking to the person. But what if we got in the habit of the reverse? Where if something happened, we said, hey, man, can, can, can you stick around for a couple minutes? I just got to get some stuff off my chest. I, I need to talk to you about some things rather than talking about you to other people about some things. Jesus said it this way, Matthew chapter 18 I love the New Living Translation version of this. He says, if another believer sins against you, that's good news. It's not just us that have this problem. They had the problem all the way back then. Jesus is like, hey, you guys, man, you guys are jacked up. Can I give you a couple steps? He's like, if somebody sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. 
If the other person listens and confesses it, you've won that person back. You guys are friends. This is awesome. Hey, but if you're unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. We have done more damage by talking about somebody than the original offense. When you don't take it to God and you don't talk to them, it actually creates more damage than the original hurt, the original offense. Because guess what? Now you've spread that poison to another person. You've spread that un unforgiveness. You spread that pain from yourself to another. What if we got in the habit of, of going to somebody rather than about somebody? See, what happens in life when we, we, we get bit and we don't deal with it, we don't respond the right way, we don't go have courageous conversations, we don't forgive quickly, we don't overlook minor offenses. What happens is we bury all that stuff beneath the surface. And we're trying to go through life just acting normal, just doing our thing, and we come up on that hurt and we end up tripping over it, right? Right? I mean, how, how many has ever gone through just a normal day, just a normal Monday, you're having a good time, and one of those thoughts from when you were a kid pops up to the surface, and you remember the pain of that moment, or the conversation with your wife two weeks ago, you're trying to go through your normal day, and you keep tripping over that hurt and that pain, that poison in the heart, you never actually got it out, it's just deep down, shoved under the rug. When we don't deal with it, it ends up being there and we're going through our day and we, we end up tripping over it. Or, or maybe we get good at not tripping over it and we just go the long way around our hurt and our pain. We don't deal with people that we think are gonna hurt us the way that somebody hurt us in the past. So we just, we avoid them. We go the long way. But what if we allowed God to do some heart work this morning and to go beneath the surface what if we let God go underneath and find the hurt and the pain that's been there for years, for decades, maybe even generations from family to family? And God does some work and find out what that poison really looked like because it started just as a quick little bite. It started as just a moment, bam. But because we didn't let God do anything with it in the moment, it became poisonous. For some of us, it's that moment on that old job, you know, working with those people doing that thing. That thing that a guy said, that boss didn't do, the raise that we didn't get. And every time we get in a moment, it's similar. We remember that pain, that, 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 that poison that's beneath the surface. It's, it's just still like the day it happened. It's still just as fresh deep in our heart. Maybe it's that old job for you. Maybe for some of you guys, it's, it's what happened in school. You remember those years when we were all developing? Those were the awkward years, weren't they? We were all a little weird, weren't we? Head too big for our body, or maybe, you know, a little, we were, all, we were just trying to get through life, you know? Kids are cruel. Maybe something somebody said during that one class. Maybe it's that way the teacher treated us during that one time. Maybe it's your parents, the way they treated you about how you did in school. Maybe you just were struggling with something that they didn't know about and it was just pounding on you and you always felt not good enough. Or maybe you were that straight A student that got that one B and you came home and you knew you were gonna face disappointment and that hurt just stayed beneath the surface and you just didn't know what to do with it. You weren't given the tools. You weren't equipped to know how to handle it. It just became poison in your heart. Every time you apply yourself, you could just feel disappointment from somebody else coming up. Maybe for some of you guys, it's those missed opportunities with dad. Maybe you longed for that relationship with your father, just never got it. Maybe you longed for him just to wrap his arms around you and, and, and it never happened. Maybe you just longed for him to tell you that he loved you and he believed in you and an opportunity never came. Some of you guys never actually had a father in the house to even hear those words. And in that absence, you made up your own story about your personal value. And those missed opportunities for what could have been ended up being poison in your heart. Maybe it was something that happened when you were a child. You remembered 
the toy you were playing with at the moment. Maybe it wasn't a doll for you. Maybe it was some G.I. Joe's. Maybe it was a video game. Maybe it was a season in your life where you were just going through life and something happened to you. Maybe you were exposed to something that you never thought you should have been exposed to and you were bit. And ever since that poison has been circling around your heart, waiting for healing to happen. This morning, I believe God's gonna do some heart surgery today. I believe God is gonna peel back the layers and do some work in our hearts. Because the probability is that when you got bit, you didn't shake it off, you didn't forgive quickly, you actually just tried to forget as quick as possible. But what that did was let the hurt of the moment settle in your heart. It became poison. Today, God can actually do work in you like nobody else can. I want to read one more verse to you this morning. Ezekiel chapter 36, God speaking through the prophet. He says, I will give you a new heart. Everybody say new heart. And put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you the heart of stone, the heart of poison, the unyielding offended heart and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees. Be careful to keep my laws. Today, the heart surgeon is in the room. God, the Holy, through the Holy Spirit, is gonna do some work in our hearts today. And here's what happens in these moments as we're talking about some of these big heavy things that have happened in years past. It may have been yesterday, two weeks ago, two months ago, or 20 years ago. It doesn't matter what happened. In this moment, most of us here today are saying, man, Pastor Chris, that's good for that person over there. Look at them, they really need it. Let's pump the brakes for a second. No, no, no. I'm talking to you, my friend. And you, and you, and you. Every single one of us have been bit. Pam. Because this is the way the enemy gets us locked up. This is the way the enemy gets us tied up is by, uh, by this hurt settling into our heart. Here's, here's how I know it to be true. This past week we were at this conference and it was, it was awesome. It was amazing, man. Worship was, was tops, you know what I mean? They were singing all these great songs. It was loud. There's lights. Pastors everywhere. And like pastors hang with pastors. This is like, it's my people. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you know, we are family. I was killing it on karaoke. It was great. Little Lionel Richie, psh, I crushed it. Anyway, we're having a good time. I'm on the top of the world. And it was hours after that, in a car ride, with somebody I've been friends with a long time. Somebody said, hey, I, I need to talk to you about some things. Something that was said almost two decades ago is still sitting in my heart. And I need to, I need to get it out. I need to let God heal me, and, and I can't hold on to it any longer. And in that conversation, I realized my own mess, my own insecurities, my own garbage leaking out all over everybody. Because of the hurt that happened to me, I was now hurting other people. I'm like, oh, Pastor Chris, but you're a pastor. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to deal with all that stuff anymore. Uh-uh, no, it's not how this thing happens. I'm human just like you are. On the top of the world, the peak of my game, everything is awesome. Everything is great. It's all gravy. I'm still dealing with poison in my own heart. We all got it. It's all happening down deep inside. The question is, will you let God do something about it? Or will you keep stumbling over it? Will you keep walking around it? Will you keep pretending like it's not there? I think there's a better way. Today, I think you could step up and say, God, here I am. You know the garbage that's deep down inside. I need you to do something about it. I think that's a better option than pretending like this is a sermon for somebody else. I think this is a good opportunity for you to step back and say, God, here I am. Take me. Do something in this heart because I'm tired of carrying the weight around with me. I'm tired of pretending like it was somebody else's fault. Telling the story over and over again. No, this is my moment to shake it off, to say, Satan, you will not win, and God, do something in me. Heal me today. I think that's the better option. So here's, here's how we're going to wrap up today. Here's, here's what we're going to do. You can't give something that you don't have. It's really tough to forgive somebody else if you yourself have never been forgiven. You can't give something you ain't got. 
If you've never let God forgive you, this is the first place we're going to begin. We got some more work to do. Uh, we, we got some work to do this morning. It's going to be awesome. God's going to do something great in this room, I promise you. Some of you guys are going to leave so light and free today. Some of you guys are going to be walking on a cloud because for the first time in your life, you let go of something that's had its hold on you. The poison's been circling around your soul. Today, some of you are going to let go for the first time. It's going to be amazing. But today, before we get there, if you've never actually let God forgive you, you can't forgive somebody else. If you do, it's just temporary. It's partial. This morning, the first thing we need to do is to let God forgive us. So I'm going to ask you to take a posture of prayer. Heads bowed, eyes closed across the room. This morning, if you've never actually accepted the forgiveness of Jesus in your heart, this is your moment. If you've ever never actually let him into your heart, if you've never actually let him forgive you, this is it. This is the time. In a second, we're going to pray together. Everybody in this room, just like I talked about earlier, all of us, we're going to pray together in a moment. But before we do, if this morning you would say, Pastor Chris, I I need to accept the forgiveness of Jesus. I I want him into my heart. I want to begin a relationship with Jesus. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand up. Nobody looking around. This is just between you and God. One, I want you to know that he already loves you, okay? He's not waiting on you to be perfect before he loves you. He's loving you into his arms. One, he loves you as you are. Two, there's nothing you can do to change it. If that's you this morning, you want a relationship with him, you want to be forgiven by Jesus this morning. Three, just lift your hand up. Just throw your hand up. Awesome. Thank you for that hand. I see it. One, two. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you can put your hands down. Whether you raised your hand or you didn't, say this with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. I admit that I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes and I need you. But today I receive your mercy and your grace. And because of the cross, I am free and forgiven in Jesus name. Amen. First, can we celebrate with those people who made a decision this morning? All right, secondly, I'm going to ask everybody to rise to your feet. Everybody rise to your feet. The band is going to get ready to lead us in one more song. But during this song, I'm going to ask the prayer team to come take their place. During this song, this this is where the heavy work starts. This is where the deep work starts. I promise you, on the other side of this moment, there is a freedom that you didn't even think existed. On the other side of this, these next four or five minutes together is a freedom, is a light spirit life that you never thought was possible. But it can only happen when we cast our cares on him. Peter wrote in another chapter, he says, man, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. This is the moment where we open up our heart. We pull back. We pull back the layers and we clean it out. All right, God, I'm done with it. I'm tired of carrying it. I'm tired of tripping over it. I'm done with this poison in my system. Take all of me. I need some work in my heart. So during this song, this is your opportunity. This is it. This is the moment. You're like, Pastor Chris, how do I do it? Man, it's just like this. Here I am, God. I'm tired of carrying the weight. I want you to take it from me. I'm giving it up. I'm laying it at the foot of the cross and I'm not picking it up anymore. By your grace, I'm walking in forgiveness. I'm walking in freedom. This is the moment. Some of you guys praying with somebody that you don't know may freak you out. And I get it. I get it. These people are trained, experienced, would love to pray with you through that process. If you need somebody to pray with, they're here to do it. But I want to say a prayer over all of us this morning. In this moment, during this worship song, there will be burdens dropped, chains broken, marriages mended, hearts healed, freedom attained in this moment, in this room right now. But it's up to you. It's up to you. I can only offer it to you. Jesus only says, here I am. I'm at the door and I'm knocking. It's up to you to let him in. Let me pray. God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you haven't given up for on us. Thank you, God, that you don't leave us the way that you found us. 
But Lord, you offer us a life of freedom. And so God, today we want to take it. We want to walk out forgiveness this morning. Before we go have courageous conversations, before we forgive minor offenses, God, we need to give them to you first. Before we go talk to anybody, I need to talk to you. And so God, in this moment, I pray your spirit will begin to saturate. God, stir up in this place right here, right now. Break up the fallow ground this morning in our hearts so that, God, you can uproot the crazy stuff. God, you can uproot the pain and the poison that's been settled in our hearts for years, for decades. I proclaim an anointing of healing in this place right now. That, God, you would do what only you can do. In this moment, we're believing for freedom, for healing. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. If you believe it, say amen. Let's pray together. Let's worship together this morning.